Hi. In this episode, we talked to Grisha Erbe about the threat. Unfortunately, I managed to catch a cold, so I couldn't really show up for this one. Luckily, Willow of Svelt Siren's fame hopped on as a replacement. Woo! I'll be back next week. Um, but before we go into the episode, here's a word from our sponsor, Vercel. Enjoy! Vercel is the platform for front-end developers, providing the speed and reliability innovators need to create at the moment of inspiration. Founded by the creators of Next.js, Vercel has zero configuration support for 35-plus front-end frameworks, including SvelteKit. We enable the world's largest brands like Under Armour, eBay, and Nintendo to iterate faster and create quality software. Try out Vercel today to experience the easiest way to use Svelte. Hello, welcome back to Svelte Radio. I have a new speaker introducing people today because Kev is out. Um, I am Brittany. We have Willow as a guest star with us today from the Svelte Sirens. Swix or Sean is with us. Mm -hmm. And then we have a guest speaker, Grisha from Threlt. Everybody say hi. Hey. Hey. Hi. Hi. <laughs> So today we are going to be talking about Threlt, what it is, and maybe some recent changes that have happened. Grisha, do you want to give us a little introduction and maybe a background of how you got started into this 3D space? Yeah. Hi, my name is Grisha, and uh, I am the creator of Threlt. Um, in case you didn't know how to pronounce it, it's Threlt, actually. And uh, yeah, do you want me to start at the very beginning? Like, okay. I, I can from a baby, yes. Uh, from we, need, a baby. we need like the whole story. I'm just kidding. okay. No just problem. Whatever background you feel comfortable. Getting. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Actually, it started very early. Like my interest in computers, 3D graphics, started very early. I think I have a fascination for computers that's pretty much stemming from my dad. He's like this inventor-like person, and I was surrounded by computers already from a very early age on, and. It was naturally that I did websites, for example, for my local skateboard community. And uh, it was also the time when I got into 3D graphics. Nice. Um, and I remember I did a 3D postcard for my school. I thought that was pretty cool because it was basically handed to everybody. I just recently found it on a hard drive, on a whole, on an old hard drive, and uh, it's pretty ridiculous. <laughs> it looks very sad, actually. Uh, yeah. But you're so proud of those first <laughs> things that you do. And like, was the skateboarding website was that MySpace or was it before? No, MySpace? that that was like its own website. It uh, it was not a it oh, was not wow. a. It, it, you um, did like your own. Rolled your uh, own I thing. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't claim it completely for me. I think it's. Uh, I know probably, um, so many my, web my developers thing. with a background that say like, oh, I did a band on MySpace and that's how I got my start in web <laughs> development because they started playing with like the BB code or whatever it was back at that time. We were yeah. Using your generation. Could be yeah. yeah, but I, I, if I remember correctly, MySpace used to provide you with tools to customize it pretty much whatever you, way you wanted, right? No? Yeah, you could add customizations to it, but I think a lot of it was in the code. So you needed to know some like HTML. And I think it was BB code was like what it used. Like, and I don't, I don't even remember if that was like a, a thing on top of HTML or what that was, but it, that's a side and aside, I was just like, Oh, a, a website you built back in the day. That sounds like so many stories I've heard. <laughs> yeah, no, it actually, it was its own website. I nice. think we were called City Light Skateboarding, if I remember co correctly. But uh, the website is not around anymore. Don't try to look it up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but there was also actually 3D for the web, but it was based on Flash back then. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really commit to Flash. And I'm, I'm glad I didn't. Yeah. And uh, yeah. And then I studied graphic design and product design. But I, I didn't really see a career in uh, like the overlap of development and design. And, and then I started to work for a company um, or like a design studio called Studio Monica in Amsterdam. And they do all kinds of projects between art and design. And these projects were always dealing with collaboration and participation and how the web is transforming from this Wild West thing where everybody can do what they want to something that is that it is now basically it's owned by large companies and and it has uh, social effects you know interesting so these projects were dealing with that and we used a lot of 3D on the web and that was actually 3JS 
I mean, oh, okay. every, everybody kind of knows 3JS, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, if you want to do something with 3D on a web, it's either 3JS and I think Babylon JS is a little bit younger, but mostly 3JS. And uh, I learned a lot in that time, like uh, the time at Studio Monica was um, basically where things kicked off for me. And I also saw that I, all of a sudden it, uh, my perspective changed, you know, you can be a designer and a developer and main, maybe also mainly a developer and a little bit of a, of a designer. And uh, yeah, now I'm a freelance developer. I'm working on pretty much all kinds of projects, be it websites, apps, mostly websites. Do a lot of the projects that you do for freelance include the 3D side? And is that why you built this library? Yeah. So I built Threlt because I was making or I was developing a project for a client of mine. And um, the design was made by Adeline Moyard. She's like a fantastic graf uh, Swiss graphic designer. And uh, she had a very strong opinion like the she does these th fancy 3d websites you know but she has a very strong opinion on webgl she didn't want webgl because she thought that images don't look crisp enough and i i kind of agree by default the browser is doing that very well if you use uh, css 3d transforms all the images they just look sharp and uh, it just looks good I then looked into libraries and solutions that were like could help me to um, build this website completely 3D, but without WebGL, but uh, with everything CSS 3D transformed. And I didn't really find anything. So I also didn't commit to any JavaScript front-end framework yet. Mm. Um, at Studio Monica, we used mainly React, a little bit of Vue, because I introduced Vue, Vue.js. I, I couldn't handle React in a way. Um, and but I, I gave I gave Solid a benchmark and Svelte and React and Vue. And uh, because I knew React 3 Fiber back then, and I knew of all the limitations it has in terms of using properties to actually drive your scene, it's something that they do not recommend doing. And I always thought it's not really declarative if you then have to get a reference to the object and then manually do all your updates if you can use properties right on your mm -hmm. components it just feels better in a way and of course this is a limitation of react and not really react 3 fiber but yeah i did these benchmarks to solid and svelte and yeah i just found out that uh yeah vue.js of course with um they are wrapping everything in proxy objects and it's quite slow it cannot handle lots of components, updating properties 60 times a second or even more. That's just not happening. And uh, React also, it's um, it's just not fast enough. And uh, Svelte and Solid, they were so solid in terms of performance. <laughs> and um, No pun intended or pun intended. <laughs> I, was, I was curious how the differences are because they're saying like some of the benchmarks for Solid just for websites are coming out a little bit faster than Svelte. Yeah. So I was wondering like, I think I don't. I, I had to. I had to pull up the numbers. I, I don't. I, I don't even. I don't even know if I have the numbers. But they were uh, probably. Still. Were they similar? Like pretty yeah, close, yeah, yeah. but just close. more. Felt was more declarative for you. Is that what you felt? Yeah. Swayed it. Coming from React and not liking the syntax, and uh, with like only a marginal performance difference, it mm -hmm. was kind of a yeah a no brainer to go for yeah. Svelte instead of. Uh, Solid still feels a little like React because of how it uses the signals and yep. updating. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, yeah, somehow that was kind of natural that I then um, leaned towards Svelte. And it actually was my first bigger Svelte project. And then I started to just whip up some components to be able to use the 3JS CSS 3D renderer. So 3JS comes with not only a WebGL renderer, but also a CSS 3D renderer to be able to render HTML elements transformed via CSS 3D transforms mm. into something, you know, like any scene that you can basically think of, uh, but with HTML elements. So it's, it's everything we wanted, but at some point we actually hit uh, performance problems 
not because of Svelte, just because the DOM cannot handle that many transform updates. Like, I was wondering about that, if it's better to do the CSS transforms, like at some point it hits like a breaking point, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and pretty fast, actually. I was, I was surprised. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and um, yeah, then, then we went for WebGL again. So um, it was WebGL again, but I already had had this wonderful setup. You know, I, I already had these components; they were ready to accept uh, properties. I was really confident that it's kind of a nice development workflow. You just assign properties instead of working on the on the objects themselves. Yeah. And it felt it felt so nice. I didn't want to drop it. And um, yeah, that's basically where Thrill started. Awesome. How long ago did you start working on the Svelte part? So Thrill. Uh, that's a, that's a good question. La it was last year. I remember that I started working on this website. It, there was no Threlt yet. There was no no public library or anything to um, to basically be able to release. But uh, I remember that uh, Rich published Threlt Cubed, mm -hmm. uh, and I felt like ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> you missed your opportunity. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. But I also tried that out and it had some limitations I was not uh, very happy about. Also, I'm a big fan of TypeScript and uh, Svelte Cubed is completely JavaScript and it doesn't provide, I think, good type, uh, good type experience. So that was something, yeah, I just, I just liked about Threlt, actually working on Threlt, working with Threlt. Before we continue with the episode, here's a word from our sponsor. Vercel. Vercel is the platform for front-end developers, providing the speed and reliability innovators need to create at the moment of inspiration. Founded by the creators of Next.js, Vercel has zero configuration support for 35-plus front-end frameworks, including SvelteKit. We enable the world's largest brands like Under Armour, eBay, and Nintendo to iterate faster and create quality software. Try out Vercel today to experience the easiest way to use Svelte. All right. So uh, Threlt had a big release recently. It sounds like you've kind of moved pretty fast if you just started last year. And now we are at Threlt 5.0. Is that right? 5.0.2, I guess. <gasps> yeah, yeah. <laughs> just moving right along. <laughs> Yeah, there were some bugs. I mean, um, maybe we, we also have to explain what Threat is in, in a way. Like, um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and the core concepts. Yeah. Um, I didn't really prepare for that. I didn't really pre prepare for anything, <laughs> but uh, let's let's see how that turns out. We didn't you have it in your head. <laughs> okay, so, um, so Threat is a component library and as of recent, also a renderer, which enables you to declaratively composite 3.js scenes. So 3.js is this 3D library that everyone, uh, everybody uses to make 3D on the web. And uh, I think I have to frame that differently. It's a little bit, it, it's really hard. I, I also don't like the term declarative. It's just jargon. Uh, I, I, I mean, think it's, that makes it easier to read. So it's like a, a higher level of code. So you're writing something that makes it easier to read, but it does some things under the hood for you that you don't have to do boilerplate stuff. Yeah, that and also we hook into Svelte's lifecycle methods to uh, add and remove objects from the scene graph and stuff like that. So it, there are actually, um, I mean, declarative is not, it's, it's not, it's not wrong. It's just overused. I, I just recently saw that App AppWrite. I don't know if you know that. Like this, yes. uh, they are also using the word declaratively everywhere, and I'm like, you know, <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what? What does that have to do with it? Yeah, anyway, yeah. They so. also just released their new console built-in Svelte kit. Ah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I didn't use it yet. Like AppWrite in general, is it good? So I do another podcast and my co-host on that works for AppRite. So I've used it alongside him like on a couple projects, but right now they don't have a cloud offering. So mm -hmm. you have to have Docker installed and you have to host your own database, but um, they are coming out with that soon. So I think I will use it more once. I am not a backend developer. I don't want Docker on my computer. So <laughs> I, I have avoided using it personally, but yeah. I've used it through his stuff. Uh, yeah. No. By the way, you what you said was exactly what you have on the website, which is perfectly fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But we, what we have on the website, I'm not really happy with that too. So. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I think that's something worth talking about. 
Yeah, so Thwelt is a component library and a renderer, which um, makes it as easy as possible to get started with 3.js in Svelte. It enables you to write declarative components instead of uh, imperative 3.js code that can get messy and sp spaghetti-ish. I mean, I think that sounds perfect. Yeah. That sounds exactly like what it is just from my limited experience using it over the weekend. Like it allows you to write that 3GS code in an easier manner. Yeah. And so what might we use Threlt for? Is this going to be a game? Like, like what might we want to build Threlt with? I think I just answered that question once on Reddit. I'm just, um, I oh, just okay. tried to look it up, but uh, I'm not that fast. So yeah, obviously you can do all kinds of eye candy things with it. So if you think about the GitHub landing page, for example, if you're not logged in, you see this globe with um, live data from where commits are happening and pull requests are coming in and stuff like that. Super good example, but it's only uh, like quotation marks, only eye candy. Um, lots of companies use it for product configurators. For example, I'm not sure if that is a thing in the States, but we have this furniture manufacturer, Tilco. They are using 3D a lot where you can configure your furniture and they just do it however you configure it. Or yeah, there are like lots of applications. You just have to commit to 3D. Would you be able to build a game or something with it in Spell? I know like a React and I, I believe like React 3 Fiber and some of those libraries are used to create some games. Yeah, you totally are. I'm not sure if it makes sense though. I mean, okay. I, I, I did for um, Threlt V5. I released a little. So Threlt V5 released a lot of breaking changes. Not yet breaking, but breaking in the future breaking. And to soothe everyone's opinion, I made like a little game for that. So you can you can play and just uh, check out how it how uh, Threat V5 is um, yeah, superior to V4. And that worked actually quite well. So I think it's I think it's a good choice if you want to make a if you want to make a game. It does not come with the usual batteries included in game engines. Oh, okay. So it does not have, I mean, it's not that big of a deal mostly, but it, it does not have like, um, uh, like a complete audio solution or it does not have an input manager. There are, however, ways of doing that, especially with uh, Svelte. It's not that hard to whip that up. You can also just look into that uh, to that game's source code and copy stuff out however you want. There's some there's some input management and some audio management involved. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can you expand a little bit? We talked about Svelte five or Threlt five point being released, and that some of these breaking changes that were made actually made the performance better. Can you talk about some of the changes that were made and what made ma what makes it better? I guess. Um, so before version five, Threlt was a wrapper around existing th or like or just around 3JS objects. So Threlt would have an export called Mesh, and which is a component. And if you drop that into your scene graph or in, into your uh, Svelte component, um, uh, in that case, then it would instantiate a three Mesh class make a new instance from that. And uh, you would be able to apply a set of predefined properties on that mesh. And you can al already see where the bottleneck is uh, because 3.js is a large, large, large library. It, it, it comes with hundreds of things. And wrapping every single export is a very tedious, time-consuming process. And that's why... I started into looking. Uh, I started looking into alternatives than wrapping stuff, and I developed a component, a single component, which does nothing else than accepting any property and applying what you pass to it to 
an object and that and that can be for example a 3js object actually this uh, this component is called 3 and it accepts any javascript object you don't have to uh, you don't have to give it like a, a class definition a 3js class class definition it can work with anything uh, it just so happens that it uh, that it's like the that it's just convenient to 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 work on 3js objects and there are certain there's a, a certain rule set you have to uh, oblige, uh, not not oblige, uh, obey. Yeah, sorry. There's a certain rule set you have to obey uh, while providing the properties to this three component. For example, let's stick with the example of a mesh. Uh, a mesh is a visual representation of a geometry and a surface. And that surface is a material. So you you provide a geometry, for example, a sphere, and a material, for example, a mesh standard material, to a mesh, and then you get like a shiny ball, for example. So if you now want to change the position of the mesh, the, the world position where it's at, you cannot assign a new vector to this property position because it's read-only. Uh, by design of uh, 3JS, so we have to we had we had to find or I had to find uh, a, wor a workaround for that. And basically, th uh, React 3 Fiber, the React equivalent of Svelte, already found that, and I used it because they obviously put a, th a lot of uh, thought already in 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 React 3 Fiber. It's uh, actually a, a really good it's a really really good library. And uh, what they do is that they check for certain other properties on, for example, this position uh, property, uh, in this case, the set property, and check if the set is a function, and if set is a function, it accepts an array of values and stuff like that. So uh, there are uh, there's a very small rule set, for example, um, yeah, I don't know. There's a very small rule set which you have to uh, obey, and then you can basically use pretty much every 3JS export, be it uh, from the standard namespace 3 or from this uh, infamous examples folder, and yeah, you're good to go. Yeah, so it sounds like you made some tweaks that opened up your options a lot more, so you have more capabilities in it now than you used to, but yep. you also made sort of a migration path or at least deprecated 4.0 for the time being where it's not going to break people's current projects, right? They have time to migrate. They have time to migrate. Yeah. yeah. So, um, the two, the two versions are completely compatible, compatible with each other. So, um, V4 components still work for v5 uh, also also together they, they you can you can nest a v4 component in a v5 component for example it's not a problem it's not a big deal um at some point some things will be removed from v5 core so thread is also split up into as of right now four packages it will be five in about some days and um, there's something really nice coming up, actually. And um, yeah, so there's core, which is this whole rendering thing, rendering, and uh, which used to be basically 3JS classes as Svelte components. Um, and there are some components in there which will eventually move from core to extras to another package extras uh, at some point in the future. So I I'm not really sure. Let's let's say months, I guess, something okay. like that. So what are, um, you mentioned four packages right now, but there's five. So what are the other three packages? So there's a, I know there's the physics engine at throughout slash rapier. Yeah, yeah. So in total, it's four packages. It's core which is um which used to be the main 3js classes as Svelte components so mesh cameras group object 3d stuff like that things you would use all the time that is uh, in core that used to be in core like it is still in core but it will move 
And then there's Xtras. And Xtras provides useful abstractions on top of these uh, core components. So for example, loading a GLTF file that you would export from Blender is kind of a tedious process in vanilla 3JS. You have to instantiate a loader and uh, you have to load the model and then you have to somehow get that into a scene graph and then it's not typed and yeah, it's it's just a little bit more work than just um, importing the GLTF component from Thread Extras and providing a URL and it just deals with all the complexities that come with it. So you can create in Blender a 3D object and then import that with the Threlt package. Yeah, so that's kind of the standard way of doing things. Um, you model things in Blender or any or any 3D software. I think all the major 3D softwares now um, support exporting GLTF because before GLTF, that was pretty different. I think pretty much every 3D software now supports exporting GLTF mm -hmm. because uh, before that, yeah, you would have to use OBJ, but they were very limited in terms of compatibility when it comes to material properties and uh, cameras and how it um, would be uh, translated into what you then see in the browser. Because, for example, some applications use, when you define the field of view for, of a camera, for example, some applications use the vertical field of view and some use the horizontal field of view. And uh, GLTF just makes that process of exporting whole scenes, uh, stream sign, streamlines it uh, pretty well, actually. It does a really good job. Awesome. And uh, Willow mentioned the physics renderer. I, I can you talk about like what rendering engine that it uses and like how anything under the hood works? Under the hood of the physics engine, yeah, that will be complicated. I I just have to go and get a physics degree then, <laughs> and I'm and I'm back in ten years. No, I actually, was, uh, <laughs> like the the rapier engine, I think, is like what yeah. I was getting at. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so uh, Thread is using the uh, the the rapier engine. It's um it's kind of a new physics engine on the web. I think it's what the 3D community or like the physics on the web com community really waited for because um, while there were alternatives, MOJS, CanonJS, they always felt like not web first, but something else first and mm -hmm. kind of um, converted to web in a way that that just was it felt it just felt a little bit weird and um so now rapier is around and rapier is incredibly fast it's on par with uh, nvidia's physx library at least um when it comes to cpu performance and um it's it's not only fast it also grows in terms of feature set it provides the basics in terms of shapes uh, but also in uh, joints, so you can you can hook things together and let them physically interact, and it's it's just great fun to to do physics based projects. Is this also the same engine that React Three Fiber and other three D libraries use? So React Three Fiber has a Rapier package, but for React okay. Three Fiber, I think there are more than one physics library you can use. Oh, interesting. If I'm not mistaken, I think they also uh, offer other packages as well. Very cool. I just have to say to whoever's listening, uh, obviously this is a audio podcast uh, and it's a little bit hard to <laughs> follow along, uh, but just go on to throughout.xyz on the website. Um, and the Rapier demos are really impressive. I don't know how long you spent working on these, um, but they, they show the possibilities for sure. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> um, not that it long, is. actually. It, uh, yeah, you 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 can enable physics in a thread scene really quickly. Actually, you do, you just have to drop in this uh, world component. It uh, provides this rapier world where gravity is applied to physics objects, and it uses the standard uh, thread frame loop to update everything physics-based in, in this world. And 
there are colliders and rigid bodies. These are the main building blocks of uh, physical objects. And then you nest a mesh, for example, in a rigid body and in a collider, because a collider has to have a, uh, a rigid body has to have a collider. And then this collider nests uh, get gets the children it gets gets yeah anyway it's really easy actually just look at the examples it's um yeah 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 you know you call throughout a component library i think this is where the power starts to shine through i'm not sure why uh you know why the the analogy of component library uh, kind of makes sense but you know I, I think once you look at the code maybe uh, it's just more declarative <laughs> I, what, what's your discomfort with declarative what why what's, what's wrong with declarative um, I mean, looking at the code, it's very short. Maybe that's the unpopular opinion today. No, that is not yeah. the unpopular. <laughs> I, I, I have a better unpopular. Like, uh, I mean, de declarative is not unpopular. No, right? Uh, everybody, everybody likes to to use that word, so it's probably not unpopular. Um, it's unpopular <clears throat> to say that you don't like it. Yeah, which is what you're saying. <laughs> I don't. I don't particularly like the. Overuse, overuse or like the, the yeah. overuse of that word um no i i think you're completely right it's it's declarative but uh in a way i'd like to think more in terms of composition than declaration i not really recently but uh, yeah oh, well i recently fell in love with these uh, slot props nobody really uses them i don't i don't know why like not nobody but uh, i didn't really see it out in the wild a lot and uh, they really because because you have to nest objects a lot in for especially in this 12v5 syntax that you can make use of this slot prop syntax quite a lot and it just feels so natural yeah it feels really good so i i, um, I like I think to think them. in terms of composition rather than declaration right exactly um you use them because you you have a component library, right? And you and you like composition. Uh, that, that's exactly the situation where slots become necessary. Yeah. Um, and maybe you know people coming over from React, where React doesn't have slots because it uses JSX. Uh, that that might be more of an alien concept. I I kind of think of slots as like a, a hack, or you know, just because you can't pass a component in as a prop, you have to use a slot, basically. Aren't they the same as children in React, though? Yeah. Um, nah, they well, are not really. named children. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, like, React is very loosey goosey, right? You can pass in data, you can pass in components. Whereas uh, you can pass in a function, right? That, that's uh, that, those render props in React. But with, um, with templating languages like both Vue and Svelte, because the templating languages insist on HTML and single file components, you cannot just pass in. Uh, you know, it's just like some some inline component that you declare somewhere else because uh, there there is no other component in in a single file component. It's only the one. Um, I got you. Yeah, but that also is what makes React really powerful in terms of what you can do with it. For example, this React three fiber thing, it's absolutely uh, crazy. Uh, it they use a feature of React that is called uh, that is a custom renderer. So. That is also, um, as far as I know, the, the the foundation of React Native in a way. So um, you can not only use the DOM to render React components, but also, and in this case, it's uh, it's uh, JavaScript that adds and removes components to and from the scene graph of 3.js. So they are using React 3.5 is using a, a custom renderer to do that, and uh, we are using just like a a regular component. And a preprocessor as of latest, which is really cool. Very cool. Looks like Brittany is uh, dealing with some family stuff. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> is there anything that we missed with Threlt before we move over to our unpopular opinions? I think the preprocessor, we could talk about that. I don't know. Like it's, uh, it's quite, it's, it also comes with, or B5 also comes with a preprocessor now. And this um, preprocessor just makes it really easy to work with this v5 syntax because you don't have to import anything you don't have to import anything from 3 uh, 3.js you uh, just import one component from from for, from threat core jesus <laughs> and um, it deals with importing the 3.js modules or exports and hooks everything up for you okay so kind it's of really a convenience thing but I mean, it looks concise and nice. 
looks a little bit weird, but I think it's okay. <laughs> will it will it, will it will it mix well with other preprocessors? I think it does, right? What do you, you mean? Have like some kind of se- you recommend some sequence sequential preprocessor. So I you know I've I've never I'm not used to any other kind of Svelte preprocessor apart from the auto preprocess, the one that everyone uses um, mm-hmm. by default. Um, so this is a new preprocessor that I haven't seen before. Um, yeah. So you're recommending this kind of like sequence type thing. I don't know. It's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. So the thread preprocessor it makes use of Svelte Walk, and Svelte Walk is an AST uh, walker that walks through the AST of your uh, Svelte component. And to be able to walk through that, it needs to be like a, a Svelte component and not a TypeScript Svelte component. So you have to run all the preprocessing uh, that would transform your TypeScript or SCSS or whatever, whatever you want to use. You have to run that beforehand so that uh, the the thread preprocessor can use that uh, Svelte walk, um, yeah, to transform your component. Yeah, it's it's not only a convenience thing; it's also kind of a kind of an overview thing. So if you look through the source code of that arcade game, you see all of these same components. Yeah, as I said before, it's just one component that does basically all the job, like uh, all the hard work. And um, it just gets very messy. You always see this three, 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 three component all over the place. And uh, you can get lost in like the markup. And um, yeah, we had uh, like a, a big discussion about that actually on, on the on the GitHub um, pull request. And um we had some alternatives, but ultimately, we came up with this solution uh, that also provides type safety, and that was kind of a big deal. So you just import one component, and uh, yeah, it, it just it also provides type safety, and I think that's that's kind of a neat thing. Awesome, indeed, indeed. I think that's time for us to move on to our unpopular opinions. Um, I do not have one this week and I've been waiting patiently to hear Grisha's because he's been saving it. I feel like <laughs> yeah, this whole time for it. us. So let's hear it. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not really sure if I'm, if I'm the only one, but every time I worked with uh, web components, I'm a little bit disappointed. Like this whole shadow DOM thing, it doesn't really feel nice. Uh, uh, you know, you you cannot change uh, any CSS properties of everything of anything, and I know that is kind of also that is that this is kind of what they were, yeah, designing. Uh, but uh, in terms of type safety of properties, it just doesn't feel like uh, I want to use it that much. It's maybe becoming a little less popular than it used to be, but that opinion is one I feel like I, I've felt for a very long time. I, yeah, I don't think that the API is great to okay. work with. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, Rich Harris has a famous blog post about why he doesn't use web components, right? Where yeah. people constantly get mad at him about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I can I can imagine. <laughs> Um, for for me, the kind of the the, the primary thing is um, uh, the inability to server side render them, right? Like uh, they they essentially only work in the browser. Oh, um, I didn't know that. It, yeah, well, well, you know, so the the web components people will say, well, then we have all these frameworks that help you pre-process them, and so if you're using a framework, then. I mean, you could choose between Svelte or... <laughs> yeah, like, what's the point of using the... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right, it, more I mean, declarative the whole is supposed, code. <laughs> it's supposed to be built into the platform, and just the platform doesn't uh, uh, doesn't support that sort of use case. And uh, unfortunately, it's, uh, it's pretty necessary if you're going to write, um, you know, programmatically generate pages, for example. Yeah, it's, but there, but nice there are... But there are libraries or frameworks that can render web components on the server. Svelte? Oh, well, Svelte can compile out to web components, but I don't know about on the server. Yeah, we say that, but like, I bet it hasn't really been tested. <laughs> we say that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually wanted to export because that first project that I did with uh, Threlt, it has it had like this really nice feature. I can um, I can show it to you also. It's a fly 
that is on the screen all the time and it follows your cursor and it makes sound and it's really annoying. Mm. And I wanted to uh, publish that as a web component that you can just drop into your website and you have like a fly that is following your, your cursor, 3D fly. <laughs> Super annoying. That's cool. <laughs> I was going to say that sounds really awful. <laughs> How about you, Willow? Any unpopular opinions today? Uh, I don't have any, but the fly thing sounds like something we should probably add to the spot docs. <laughs> yeah. Along with dart mode. I saw we're finally yes. in the dart bubbles. mode. I think that is an unpopular opinion, to be honest. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. I, got, well, I got nothing let's... either. Fresh out. All right. We have, yeah. we have picks. I know. Let's let's move on to picks because both of us have picks. You want to go first, Fix? Oh, um, well, I just came from playing uh, this game with my sister called Lovers in a Dangerous Space Time, which is a fantastic title. And basically, you're traveling around the universe in a spaceship. It's a, it's a co-op game. You're defending yourself from aliens and you're saving space bunnies to save the universe with the power of love. Um, that, that's oh as much as God. I know about it. It um, sounds fantastic. I'm going to have to buy a Switch for Christmas now so my kids uh, and I can play this. We love right. co-op games. Actually, so uh, you, you, it's also available on Steam, so you don't have to have a Switch. I, I just happen oh, to be using uh, a Switch right now. How would you play Steam? Co-op. Can you get I, that I on a PS5 <laughs> as like an app? Maybe. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. I just, I'm a fan a of co-op games. Deck. It's like a Switch. It's true. But the, the the point is co-op, right? So you need multiple controllers and uh, yeah, you know, that's a shared, true. shared screen. Yeah. Um, and uh, my my only report would would be that like there's a there's quite a few levels to this thing, and we we got stuck on level two and it was so hard. Uh, but we took a lot of planning, and and we finally beat it after like two hours. It's actually like pretty short. Like each round is like ten to fifteen minutes. It, it's just like the the controls and, and the planning needed is, is hard and you need to collaborate you can't play this uh, by yourself so i, I just like that for any family games uh, because yeah. then you can yell at each other <laughs> it sounds <laughs> awesome well uh my pick is yesterday i did yesterday as of recording day i did a stream with uniforms tim benix and it's called unpack the stack and we went over the Jamstack survey results that were done at Jamstack Conf and talked a little bit about how some frameworks were declining, some are still in the upper part where we have higher satisfaction and growth ratings. And one of those is SpellKit. So we unpacked SpellKit and kind of what it's about, what it gives you, provides out of the box for you, and went through some stuff. So it was a fun time. Cool. Grisha, did you come up with a pick? Oh, oh yeah. Uh, Sorry. Yeah. I did. Oh, sorry, just speaking, speaking as Falcon, uh, we, uh, you know, we're keeping a close watch on uh, the issues now on the road back. We're doing a <laughs> countdown, right? Like there's five issues left today. <laughs> it's a count up because uh, uh, I, I started with five and then I went to six. And then I went to five. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, no pressure. I think it's just uh, fun and games until, you know, it actually lands. So Yes. Yeah. Actually, I started getting into Swelt because I was so disappointed by the communication of the Nuxt uh, team. And, and Ooh, that was part what of what you? we talked about yesterday is that, uh, so Vue 3 came out and then the Nuxt 3 was not supported for a very long time. So there was no way to actually create like a yeah. big application with Vue that yeah, was yeah. using the latest and greatest Vue 3. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I was I was really on the on the Nux team for a long time, and uh, I thought it's it it, it still is a pretty uh, good uh, piece of uh, technology. I still use it in production Nux two uh, for some for some clients, and um, but yeah, their communication for Nux three was uh, pretty horrible. At least in the beginning, I think they catched. They they catched up at some point. I think they were they were um, realizing that people were just like, when is it coming? When is it coming? Tell us. <laughs> and, they did. Uh, I think a couple months ago, it finally yeah, yeah. like released Nux three, and it's like officially supported and everything now. Um, part of the reason, like the survey results were showing that Vue and Nux were in the danger zone, is what Lori called it in the survey results this year, where they didn't 
stop growing, but the growth rate between the previous year and this year was lower. Hmm. So they're in that danger zone of like falling off and <laughs> it, it made Evan year zone. pretty mad. So <laughs> you're still growing, but growing oh, less. Nice. That's a, that's a problem. Yes, exactly. Uh, I, I think, uh, you know, so I, first of all, I do think that there's an unhealthy attitude, right? Like uh, view uh, for what it's worth has, has always has always been like an independent uh, community um, that is, uh, you know, was felt now uh, with Rich working for uh, for Vercel and, and React being React. Like, you know, it's 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 uh, view has always been sort of the, the standout in terms of independence. Mm -hmm. I, I I just like I've heard inklings of like this this dissatisfaction, and I've seen people on the, in the view community quit view over this. And it seems very alarming. Like, uh, you know, yeah. So, <laughs> um, and, and one thing I observe is like view when, you know, when they did the big two to three switch, um, you know, what you just materialized to me was they had a coordinated switch of the entire ecosystem, right? Uh, the state management uh, tool, like the, I, I don't I, like there's there's a whole long list of like the, the stuff that uh, view switch from two to three. I just realized that Nux was not included in that list. Yeah. <laughs> so um, and it, I it wasn't obvious to me. I, I was I was like kind of fairly close. Uh, you know, I'm friends with Evan, but like I, I didn't notice until, until you said so today. Part where you talking about was like the unhealthy attitude, like of them being in the danger zone. I did, I didn't like that phrasing on it. Oh, it's, like, it's unhealthy to say like you're in danger if you do not grow faster than you did last year. Right? Yeah, that, that is very I, VC type thinking. Yes, I I didn't really love that either, and I think that they are still growing. There are like Evan made a great point on Twitter. There's a good Twitter thread about this. Maybe I should find for the show notes on. Um, there were only like 6,800 respondents and it's very geolocated. And I think a lot of you developers are in China where we don't have survey results from. So it's like, there's some stipulations to that data too. I think it needs to be taken with a grain of salt. Well, um, if you want to be heard, the state of JS survey is on right now. That's another Absolutely. <laughs> big survey. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we're trying to get you know, people to show up regardless of what framework you like. And fill in Svelte Radio for the podcast. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. But you must like Svelte Radio. <laughs> you, you must add Svelte Radio. <laughs> All you, right. you don't use Svelte, uh, it's Willow? okay, but you can, you can listen to Svelte Radio. <laughs> Did you have any picks? Yeah, I um, I just watched uh, Wednesday on Netflix. Oh, that that is, so oh, that, that is so your vibe. Oh, the Adams Family? Yes, it was very good. Oh, was it um, good? Yeah. I heard mixed reviews. I no, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I, let's just let's just put it this way. I started it last night, and it's eight hours worth of content. <laughs> and <laughs> and I'm done. you're done. <laughs> oh my gosh! I thought yeah. it was a movie, and you were like, "Oh, I watched the movie it. last night." No, um, I also saw Matilda the Musical, the new version in cinema, and that was very good. Oh, that um, sounds good. So, yeah. what's Wednesday? Is it kind of a guilty pleasure series, or uh, it's yeah. about it's a series about I don't know if you know the Adams family. It's about yeah. Wednesday Adams. Ah, okay, okay, okay. The the goth uh, <laughs> little girl, yeah, played by Jenna Ortega, um, who was uh, I I I love uh, another Netflix series called You, uh, which is about a serial killer, and she played the little sister uh, mm. of of uh, of a side character, and to see her grow up into a leading character like this, and to be so darkly humorous, I, I just uh, I really loved that uh, uh, that portrayal of her. Yeah, my my whole family has just been just Wednesday as well. It's great. Yeah, talking about growing up, I just started with uh, Stranger Things series four, so uh, season four. Oh, the kids are That's big some now, right? Serious growing up, <laughs> like uh, <laughs> wow, I was I was surprised. It's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Netflix, that's not my uh, Netflix does the good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Anything else before we're all set? Yeah, I mean, I I, st I, I also have a pick now. Oh. oh. I completely <laughs> skipped over. I'm so sorry. Yeah, it's it's nothing special. It's slot props actually. Uh, so if you if you don't know what slot props are, get into slot props. They will change your, they will change the way how you uh, how you write your Svelte components. At least they Great. did for me. Super nice. Yeah. Awesome. Um, well, I have one follow up question. Uh, just just about 3D and and uh, 3JS and all that. Um, you know, I, I for for what it's worth, I, I'm extremely impressed by your docs. You know, there's there's most of the APIs have like an animation or like a little REPL where you can see the code and you can see uh, stuff live. And that's really good because I don't have the imagination. Like I'm not a digital artist, right? Like a lot of people when they try this stuff out, 
you know, I, I move rectangles on the screen um, to, <laughs> and then to go from rectangles on the screen to 3D, it's a, it's a very big step. Um, basically, uh, what, you, what you have here is really good for copy paste. I really love like there's, there's even like a vehicle controller demo. Um, what else would you learn? What, what else would you recommend for people converting from 2D to 3D? Like what resources? Converting from 2D to 3D. What, Basically what get, getting, getting into 3D for the first ah, time, right? Like okay. whether or not using throughout, whether you're using 3JS, like uh, there's a lot of concepts to learn. Yeah. Um, and like what should people build as their first thing? You know, maybe that's a, that's a, that's a fun question. Or so, what's, yeah. a, what's, a, what's a book or a, t a course that you recommend? Um, I cannot really com uh, recommend books. I, I didn't use any books to, to learn that. Um, but I mean, if you're, if you're looking for inspiration, then the three JS, uh, page Examples. is like a great source yeah. of inspira inspiration. The, the projects that they show there that are all done with three uh, JS, um, are pretty good. By the way, there's also like a studio Monica project there. And, um, if you are looking into just uh, starting out with uh, 3D, I would highly recommend getting into Blender and working with Blender because uh, 3JS was written or, um, yeah, it was created with um, softwares like these in mind. I mean, WebGL by itself, they WebGL by itself provides all the means to, um, yeah, uh, make 3d on the browser possible in the in, in the web possible but um, uh, it's just it's just 200 lines of code to to draw a single triangle and there are no concepts like uh, a, a camera or a mesh or something like that it's it's very very low level and so 3js was created with this compatibility of 3d software and the stuff that you actually that actually ends up in the in your code uh, to run 3D on the browser with that compatibility in mind also with like the mindset comp compatibility so you have things like a perspective camera in 3JS things like an orthographic camera a mesh uh, certain types of geometries animation tracks nonlinear animations bones to deform character movements and stuff like that so um getting into blender is uh, definitely worth it if you want to get into 3D on the web. I've heard really good things about Blender. I've seen some cool, cool things. Yeah, it's done incredible. In it. well, like, it's uh, it's absolutely amazing what they do. At least, and, uh, and it's open especially source. the progress of the of the of the last three four years. Amazing. The, yeah. For the, the the intimidating thing for me is you know uh, everyone does the donut tutorial for Blender, and there's like. 30 hours worth of donut tutorials before you get <laughs> make, a, make a donut then. <laughs> so like actually do <laughs> something else besides a donut. That's true. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Grisha. Grisha, hey, thank you. I, I keep saying it like, I don't know if I'm saying it right or wrong. I'm so sorry, but <laughs> thank you so much for coming on and explaining throughout to us and everybody go out, check out throughout.xyz, um, try it out and see what you can build with it. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Thanks. Wonderful. Thanks. Hey, it's Kevir. If you like the show, please drop a review on your favorite podcast player. It would help out a lot. Thanks.